Okay, I think we are going to get started. If we can just maybe close. Oh, thank you so much. You're so helpful here. All right, if we can just close the door back there. And we'll get started. If you can find a seat, I think there's some seats around. All right. Good afternoon. It's such a pleasure to see so many of you here um, at this time of the day. I know it's been a long day, so we really appreciate that uh, you're here for our presentation. So we're talking about nursing for planetary health, actualizing the planetary health education framework. And um, what we've decided to do is that we're each going to, uh, my colleagues and myself, are going to uh, tell you a little bit about who we are. You can see on the screen uh, our names and, and uh, where our affiliations and what universities we're from. But we're going to tell you a little bit more about us as we get started. Okay. Okay, this is me. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about me. Well, thank you. Barb Astle is my name. And I just wanted to let you know that I'm a mother. And I, I do have a partner. And I also um, am a nurse educator. I love being a nurse. And I reside in two provinces in Canada. So you might wonder why that is, but that's a long story, but I won't get into that. But just to let you know, I reside and work on the wonderful um, unceded territories of the Stolo people in British Columbia, Canada. So on the left-hand side of the slide, you'll see that is called Euclid, British Columbia, and that's the Pacific Ocean. I spend a lot of time visiting that beautiful part of Western Canada. I hope someday you might also uh, join me there. In the middle of the slide at the bottom is Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So I also spend half my time there. So I work in British Columbia, but my family lives in Alberta. I know, been doing it. I'm in the 12th year of commuting between provinces. And so what you see there is the Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And in the background is the Canadian Rocky Mountains. And to the right of that, you'll see Lake Louise. And some of you might have heard of Lake Louise. Uh, it's very famous for its its mountain, its areas. It's very famous for a place to go hiking and skiing. And that's something that I've been doing since I was a little girl is skiing. Yeah, snow, thinking about Canada. And then above that, you'll see that's a picture of my partner, William. We call him Bill. And uh, we do a lot of hiking. And so that's also in uh, the province of British Columbia. Also, I teach at Trinity Western University. So that's in Langley, British Columbia. It's about 30 kilometers east of Vancouver. So if you know where Vancouver is, you'll kind of have some idea. And it's pretty close to the American border. And at the top left-hand uh, side, or your, your left-hand side of the screen, is my, I teach um, two courses um, called Planetary and Global Health. And that's my undergraduate nurses students who are taking the Planetary Health Pledge. Uh, um, a couple of years ago. So wanted to see um, what I do uh, in that course is one of the things that we do is that pledge. And then um, also I have a big uh, research uh, program of research on persons with albinism and human rights. And it really fits within a lot of the work that I do in planetary health and climate change. And so that's a group of uh, um, my colleagues in South Africa in November of, uh, of this past year. So I just wanted to let you know that's another area. It's kind of interesting how I've been doing all this work in global health and planetary health education for over two decades. And then some of my research work has just transcended into some of this other work in um, other parts of the world, Africa, um, specifically South Africa, Tanzania, uh, Ghana, uh, England, Canada, United States. So that's a little bit about me. So now I'm going to ask my colleagues to tell a little bit about where they reside and what they do. Thank you.
This is fine. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Heidi Honecker Rogers, and I am a daughter and a wife and an aunt. I am a mother, a dog mom, a lover of Aspens, an artist, a forest therapy guide, a writer, a reader. I am also a nurse, a family nurse practitioner, an advanced practice holistic nurse, which is a specialty in nursing. I am an associate professor at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, which is in the southwest part of the United States, in the state of New Mexico, on the unceded um, lands of the Sandia and Pueblo peoples. And I am so joyful to be here, to be loving and holding this community and this transition of nursing for planetary health and sharing our story. Hello, everyone. Oh, short person. Hello, everyone. It is just great to be here with you. And thank you for coming this late in the day. My name is Teddy Potter, and um, I want to share my story. I come to you from the land of the Dakota people and the Ojibwe people in Minnesota, which is in the central United States, up near the Canadian border, but not quite to Canada. I have to go visit Barb for that. Um, you're seeing a picture of Lake Superior, one of the largest freshwater bodies in uh, the world. Um, we spend a lot of time on Lake Superior in the wintertime. It's very, very snowy. The ice is generally so thick that we can drive trucks on them. Um, but this year, because of climate change, the ice started breaking up and on some of our northern lakes, the ice did not even form. Uh, the picture below that is um, I am an academician. I'm a professor in the School of Nursing at the University of, Nurse, uh, of Minnesota. And if any of you um, are familiar with the International Council of Nursing, this is the current president of the ICN, Dr. Pamela Cipriano, who is part of our work. Um, I have been doing um, some work with the United Nations. We are the first school of nursing to have um, a Congo status, uh, uh, NGO status with the United Nations. And so we've been bringing our students to the United Nations and um, helping them understand the importance of global nursing uh, leadership. Um, the picture over to the right of that is a picture of me in Cuba. I like to go to Cuba. They have the most spectacular healthcare system I have ever seen because it's all grounded in prevention. Let's alleviate suffering before it starts. What a novel idea. Isn't that wonderful? Um, the other part is I, get, I was a COVID injector. Um, I have a long time history of nursing practice. Um, when I was actually doing practice, I started as an oncology nurse. But then I became an HIV AIDS nurse and did that for 15 years before I went back and started um, my academic career. I said I would never do policy work. Ooh, why would I not like policy? Um, and people would say, you need to be involved in policy. And I said, never, ever. Well, I go to Washington, D.C. all the time, and I'm very involved in policy work right now because to create change, I found that I needed to do it through policies. But my most important job of all the things that I do is this picture of me with two of my grandchildren. And that is what I am working towards is a better future for them. And that's what has drawn me to, um, uh, to planetary health, uh, creating the future that we know is possible for them. Next slide. So what is nursing? That's a really good question. Around the world, there um, are about 28 million nurses, and we are the largest group of health professionals in the world. Um, but nurses practice differently depending on which country you are in. But the unifying um, thread that runs through nurses, no matter where you are nursing, is the um, sense of wanting to prevent suffering where possible, um, be involved in uh, restoring life, restoring um, uh, capabilities, and if someone has a terminal disease, to help people um, uh, pass with a um, without uh, suffering or pain, um, and that's what we do. Um, uh, we do many different things. Uh, we, you will find us in cer certainly hospital settings, clinic settings. You'll find us in public health. Um, some nurses run businesses. Some nurses work in Congress or the government. Some are entrepreneurs. Some are um, in hospice or home care. 
most of my career was out in the home uh, doing infusion therapies um, out in the home. So you find us everywhere and just about everybody knows a nurse. So I just would love to say, just so we get a feel of the room here, how many of you are nurses in this room? Okay. How many of you know a nurse besides your colleagues? Okay. Most of us do know a nurse. And if you're not a nurse, you are so very welcome um, in this uh, presentation because this presentation is not just about nursing. It's about how we can move the planetary health education um, uh, uh, framework forward. And so the nurses are, are going to be talking to you about that today. So one of the things that brought us together as a community of nursing for planetary health were really our heartbreaks. Um, we came together in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and um, where we were finding, um, we were all teaching our, our students were working and going to, um, to school. We were discovering that um, you know, we were listening to the stories of nurses really on the front lines, um, their bodies, their minds, um, witnessing the devastation of the COVID-19 pandemic, experiencing it for themselves, um, nursing along with all of, all of the health professions and all of the frontline workers really experienced a lot of illness, um, uh, long-term and also death from, from COVID-19 as, as really frontline workers. And so it was the heartbreaks that brought us together and also the heartbreaks around what was happening in the world um, at that time. And we decided that we weren't going to settle for the heartbreaks. We wanted to get in and start to transform. So we understand that a great transition is necessary. It is the only way that we are going to work our, um, our way out of this. Our current healthcare systems are immensely broken and um, there's huge disparities. And um, some people have ac no access to healthcare and others um, have anything they want. And that is not a, um, appropriate and that's not just. So we see this great transition as a time to heal both our profession, the heartbreaks that Heidi spoke about, and our planet. We recognize the possibility of connecting people um, all over the globe to this movement and vision because nurses are everywhere. What a great way of connecting us. Thank you. <laughs> So if you think of a weaving, I've been so impressed with the beautiful weavings in Malaysia. Beautiful, beautiful uh, work. So if you think about the threads that um, uh, you uh, weave a loom and you um, have the, the warp threads that are consistent, and then you weave in and out um, between these, these threads. The warp threads are the consistent piece that runs through the whole fabric. And this is what how we see these foundational pieces of, um, of planetary health. Oh, I can do, I have to see the next slide because they're, okay. So one of the foundational pieces that we want to make sure everybody knows about is the planetary health education framework. It's open access. It's available on the Planetary Health Alliance website. But we began to understand as this global movement is building, this transdisciplinary movement is building, nurses needed to have a way to talk to farmers and engineers and lawyers. We needed a shared language. And so we uh, brought together 24 experts from different fields. And we said, what do we need to teach our students so everybody can have the same language, so we can all have this starting point. And the 24 experts came up with 500 things that needed to be taught. Well, that is not going to work. There isn't any room in curriculum to even add 10 new things. So we worked and we worked and we talked and we worked and we talked and we worked until we got it down to five core domains that every single person, no matter what field they're in, no matter where they practice, no matter what they do, from children to grandparents, we need to know these five pieces. The first is interconnection within nature. 
we're very purposeful to not say interconnection with nature. So the old thinking was, here's nature and here's humans, and people will say we need to reconnect them. That's a problem. When you think you're separate from nature, it allows you to do to nature anything you want to do. You can cut down the trees without thinking about them. You can pollute the water without worrying about it. You can blow up the top of a mountain because it doesn't matter. So we needed to bring back the indigenous way of thinking of interconnection within nature. Humans are nature. We are part of nature. We cannot be separated from nature. What you do to us in, um, and the rest of nature, it's interconnected. If we don't start at that point, we will not fix this very, very broken system. So that's our starting point. The next piece is the Anthropocene and health, understanding that these are human-caused problems. They're not natural patterns. It's not cycles. It's not El Nino. These are human-caused disruptions of our Earth's natural systems. Then social um, equity and social justice. That's not just something we tack on at the end. It's one of the five core domains of, of planetary health that we must find solutions that work for all people, not just some people, all people. Systems thinking and complexity. This is really tough stuff and very, very complicated. Governance, um, business, communications, you're hearing it this week of how complicated it is. If you think it's simple, you're going to cause problems because your, your solutions are not going to be thinking about the systems and complexity. Then finally, movement building. We need to get moving. And that's what this week is about, again, is putting into action the things we feel strongly about. Those are the five core domains of planetary health. Our next core document is the Sapala Declaration of Planetary Health. So if the um, planetary health education framework is our shared language, how can we talk with one another? Once we're together and talking the same language, where are we going? We need a shared vision, okay? So the Sao Paulo Declaration provides that vision of where are we going. It has guidance for the um, business sector, for the faith community, for the healthcare sector. It has guidance for just about every sector that's out there. And it talks about the importance of this great transition that we need to create, where um, we're not going backwards because backwards didn't work. It got us in the mess we're in right now. We need to be um, moving towards a better future. And that's um, what the Sapala Declaration sets us up for. And finally, our core, another core thread for us is this whole idea of transdisciplinarity. Transdisciplinarity is not just one discipline. And it's not just two disciplines. And it's not even five disciplines all in the same room. It's intentionally creating a relationship. So when this discipline and this discipline come together, something new is possible. Something new happens. So I like to use the metaphor of a, a three colors of paint, red bucket of paint, a yellow bucket of paint, and a blue bucket of paint. When you create the right environment for those to come together, purple, green, and orange become possible. They weren't possible before until you bring those together. And that's what we're looking for is these solutions that no one has thought about because we haven't come together in the same room. So those are our found, founding documents that we have used to move nursing forward. Now we're going to talk about the process. What did we do? Thank you. So you've just heard from Teddy. You've heard about the Planetary Health Education Framework. You've heard about the Sao Paulo Declaration, and you've heard this commitment to transdisciplinary. So important. So we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about the process. So what you're looking at there 
is to accomplish this great transformation that we're talking about. Um, we have to situate our work in the Anthropocene. So for this process, we have chosen and the application to the two loops that you see up there. It's the two loops theory of systems change. The original two loops theory draws insights into nature where living systems experience simultaneously growth and decline during the evolutionary transition. In the two loops theory, for systems change, the first loop, which is collapsing in the context of planetary boundaries, many of us know what those are, represent the dominant systems. Patterns and values working from limitless growth mentality, which is, we cannot sustain that. The loops are meant to be seen as occurring multiples, not as one line, but multiple systems and structures that are collapsing because they are unattainable. They're destructive, oppressive, and inherently unfair, and disproportionately benefiting others. So in this model, in this system, in the first loop, having reached their peak, it's inevitably collapsing. I guess I could look over here, couldn't I? Sorry. I, yeah, keep that up there. That's great. Uh, the second loop represents the systems and structures that are needed, they're important, that are emerging. Um, these are inherently collaboratively co-created and assembled as system structures and sensibilities based on the values and ethics of responsibility, fairness, sustainability, and collective well-being. So when I look at this, this two loops that we used, it's not just nursing. It's like Teddy said, we see business, we see medicine, we see healthcare, we see all these disciplines, and we're looking at that one side, and we see all that, that is that extractive economy that we cannot no longer have a blind side to that. And what happens in the middle there is that, as you can see in the middle, is that there's this activity that can that really is collapsing around us. So we have to get into that second loop. And that second loop that emerges looks at a new way. It's that shift away from just what I said, that um, extractiveness, that decline that we've been seeing, and all those sometimes we say mistakes by the well-known author Andrade. So where do we go from here? It's important that we're courageous and we look at this destruction, we look at it seriously, and we know that we cannot sustain living in a world like that. However, what we can do is we can look forward and we can all be part of that process and in, into that emerging second loop. And we can see there if we can reimagine what the world might be if we get into that second loop and don't stay in the quagmire of that middle part of this particular system that we're looking at. So just to get clear, we came together with a group of nurses who were interested in taking a look at what was broken and, and really painful in nursing and what was broken and really painful in the world. We wanted to come together to think about how do we connect nurses around the world using planetary health and these frameworks that we've just explained as a lens through which we do everything in nursing. We wanted to start those conversations with ourselves um, in order to start those conversations with our students, our colleagues, and our global community. We were lucky to be able to be connected. Um, nurses, actually, it turns out, are connected around the world through the International Council of Nurses. All the nursing organizations in every country um, have a connection together. So we, we were lucky in that, that we had the opportunity to really start conversations around nursing for planetary health and well-being. 
Next slide. So in order to really, in order to start this, we took a look at the theoretical frameworks, um, the invitations in from the planetary health community, and um, and then we we wanted to get grounded in what is really working in nursing. So um, what were we appreciative of that we want to make sure that we can shine lights on, amplify, grow, continue to talk about? So um, we actually started with a gratitude process. We started uh, with a retreat, actually, in um, Minnesota. It's crazy. If anyone has ever been, <laughs> we were there in January. So for me in New Mexico, I landed in Snowville and um, we went to a beautiful retreat center courtesy of um, uh, folks who are in this room and the University of Minnesota and our um, Trinity Western University of New Mexico. Um, we came together and we we sat down in gratitude. That was the first thing that we wanted to do. What roots us? What works in nursing? And uh, and then um, and then we actually needed to talk about what wasn't working in nursing as we were thinking about what would a transformation look like for our entire profession. We needed to really all we. We needed to process and sit in the pain. Um, I know we're, we're folks uh, present today when Dr. Ray was talking about the Joanna Macy framework, the work that reconnects. You'll notice that we started with gratitude and then we moved into honoring our pain. Um, you'll see the next slide after that. These are actually some of the notes uh, from, the, from the retreat. Um, so these are the things that we were talking about. Um, in our retreat and thinking about what are we trying to solve here in nursing? And then we moved on. So it was important for us to think differently. And um, I had been looking at octopus for some reason. I We don't have any octopus in Minnesota. So why I was interested in octopus, I don't know. But I just was octopus was on my mind. And then the last fam in Boston, we went to the aquarium and there were octopuses. And my son gave me an octopus book. And I was like, what the heck is this? And then eight people showed up for this retreat. And I was like, oh, we're like octopus <laughs> here. So in preparation for the, for the retreat, I bought everybody octopus bracelets. And we talked about the importance of this amazing creature. And as we began to talk about the creature, it was like, they are incredible. They're nothing like humans. They're totally designed differently. Their eyes work differently. Their arms are independent. It is amazing, this octopus. And that seeing differently, that ability to take on a different way of knowing, a different way of looking at things, was ended up being fundamental. I didn't know why octopus kept on crossing my path, but it was a, there was a reason for that. And that was to get us to start thinking differently. Um, it was really important for us to break out of our human-centric behaviors, human-centric thinking, and begin to think in terms of our planetary system. So that's what we started with. Thanks. So the octopus did um, serve as our muse. We also needed to really think about, uh, I'm just going to pause and say, I got to go to Cuba with Teddy Barb. And, and I love this image um, by an artist, Jose Fuster, um, like, the heart has anyone heard about like heart forward or heart as the red road in the um in in our community um we talk about heart centered leadership um aligning our work with what we care about um i i know i see nods everyone understands that concept and this idea of how do we ride our bike um how do we get on the path toward aligning where we're going with what we care about. And so we use the octopus as the metaphor. We really tried to imagine, like really imagine what would nursing for planetary health, what would it look like? What would the, what would the future look like if we were, when we are successful generations from now, right? Uh, the work that we're doing. What does that look like? And, and so we sat in this really deep, creative 
uh, space we really imagined. Um, and and then we did a little art. So we're nurses, whatever. We aren't totally artists. and uh, But we did actually, this was um, the length of a really long table. And it took us actually probably like a good hour, hour and a half to, to paint and to um, talk about, to narrate what does the future look like if as we manifest nursing for planetary health. So we did dive deep into the act of hope piece, the imagination uh, piece. Thanks. So we had the opportunity to work with a, um, a, a, a scribe who's an artist. We spent time thinking through the planetary health education framework, starting with the interconnection within nature component. And we narrated, what does that mean for nursing? Um, I have lots of notes, but I'm just gonna give you some of the shorter notes. Um, so there is reciprocity here in nursing. Our health and well being is intertwined. We are dependent on each other for nourishing, for nurturing, for care. All life and all beings are interdependent. Everything has a relationship with everything else. As nurses, we are reclaiming our sense of place as transformative healers, honoring our interbeing and interconnectedness, and embodying this interconnection within nature through slowing down, resting, deep listening, making connections. These are some of the notes from our retreat. In the Anthropocene and Health, we worked with our, so this scribe process is really cool. So I'm just going to like pop out and tell you, um, it's amazing to work with an artist who's really listening, who's, who's drawing the stories and creating things and then asking us, is this what you're talking about? Is this what you're imagining? Um, we went through many iterations. Um, Kate Morales, um, is the, is the beautiful being who served as our scribe. Um, and so, uh, well go back to that. Yeah. So anyway, this is sort of self-explanatory. I think we all, we've all been here all week. Um, but in the Anthropocene and Health, we talked about weaving the understanding of the ecological determinants of health through every aspect of nursing. And for us, being a health resource in our community, having responsibilities for public health preparedness and disaster response, carrying responsibilities for our own health sector, and um, reducing our own negative impact on the environment. And these other responsibilities around being good stewards for the sustainability of the health systems that we co-create and that we are utilizing. Thanks. In systems thinking and complexity, we talked about being pattern readers. Uh, that is a Teddy Potter. She always talks about being a pattern readers. Um, but it is actually true in nursing that we we look for patterns, and that's one of our skill sets. We see and understand complex relationships with the within systems of the human body and expand this understanding to our nested family, community, and ecosystems. Um, we know that the complexities of the systems inside the body are intimately connected to and impacted by the complexities of the systems outside of the body. So those were the conversations that we were having around this domain of the planetary health education framework. Thanks. Um, in the social justice and equity, we talked about our focus at this moment in time must be on the health and well being of the populations and the ecosystems that are on the front lines and the fence lines of environmental degradation. We talked about having in nursing, having a responsibility to recognize the institutions, the laws, healthcare, education, social institutions that have historically promoted and reproduced inequities and shaped the current planetary living systems. Um, so that was our, our call in, in, uh, thanks. And finally, in movement building and systems change, um, notes, notes from the future, nurses can lead the work to move the healthcare sector into sustainable practices that reduce our current harm to the planet. Nurses are public leaders and trusted voices, and we can leverage our positionality to pursue just and health 
um, just, fair, and health-promoting environmental practices, and this is the future of our profession. There are more nodes on our Nursing for Planetary Health uh, website. I think so. Am I the next? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Okay, now we're bringing you back. Teddy did such a great, yeah, you're so wonderful, honestly. <laughs> I just can't, the, the support here is amazing. Um, so just bringing you back again to our, our uh, planetary health education framework that Teddy spoke about at the beginning. And what you see there, it's all interconnected. So that's, again, bringing us back to what we've just talked about, what we've looked at in terms of our gathering as nurses and looking at each of these five domains. And again, you can see here, they're all braided domains. They all work together. Um, that's exactly right. Oh my goodness, yeah. I was just coming to that. My, my phone just went. Um, and I think what's also really important with this and other documents that we've worked on in the past, this is actually a living document. This is a document that when we, some of us that are here that were part of the creating this document, um, this is not a prescriptive. This is not a list of competencies. This is something that is with us. And so we're wanting to invite you this is a guide that we want to invite you to be a part of what we've created here. And so this is the activity that we're gonna ask you all to participate in. So we've given you the foundation, we've talked to you about where we are, and many of you have heard many different stories. And now we want to take this and enact it and think about how we might look at this transdisciplinary. That is such one of the main uh, focuses of planetary health. And so this is where it's going to be our invitation now. And I'm going to get Teddy. Teddy's yeah. the next one that's going to bring us um, to this next activity. Thanks. Thank you so much. So in summary, um, again, we have the planetary health education framework, which gives us a language for talking. We have the Sao Paulo Declaration on Planetary Health that gives us a shared vision. All disciplines, all people, everyone is aiming for the shared future. Now we're backing up to say nurses um, can make a contribution to this shared future. And what's our contribution? We invite other disciplines to do the same thing. What we're doing here is uh, sharing some steps to show this process of how every discipline, no matter where you are, if you're a fisher, somebody who fishes or somebody who draws and is an artist or a dancer or um, somebody in politics, everyone has a role to play. And we play it within our discipline to bring us together towards this vision that we ha have shared. So now Heidi's going to uh, lead us in a wonderful activity. It's kind of like the pinned um, Zoom boxes, right? Who Who's the speaker? All right. So everyone stand up, shake it out a little. It wouldn't be a Planetary Health Alliance meeting unless there is an interactive component to everything, right? All right. And then just mill around a little and find somebody that you haven't had a chance to meet with. We're going to pair up for the next activity. So just scoot around, because I know I see some nurses that know each other sitting next to each other. So shift it up. All right. <laughs> Spouses also have to play. All right, cool. All right, so just take a minute to introduce yourself um, to your partner and to talk about what field you are in. Just keep it there. That's good. All right. So we're going to take two minutes. Is that right? Okay. All right. Two minutes, one minute per person. 
please talk about. Yeah, do you want to set? Okay, all right. We're going to set our timers for one minute per person. Please talk about what is not, what is working in your profession? What is good about the work that you're doing? Go ahead. All of, all of you are having a great time, but we do need to have you now do the discussion. Yeah. All right, first person. Um, so each person's gonna take a minute. Talk about what is working in your profession that is in service to the work of planetary health. So um, go, and then we'll we'll name it in a minute. Okay. What's working in your head? All right. So if the first person could wrap up and we'll have the second person start, we've got one more minute on what is working. It's a little bit like cat herding. All right. Not bad that I can whistle. All right. Does everybody feel like they've gotten their gratitude, their appreciations? Raise your hands. If you if you got a chance to talk about what is working in your profession, right? All righty, and then raise your hands because you know you're paying attention. You got to listen to what is working from somebody else's perspective. We got to talk and listen. Now we're gonna talk about what's not working, what our heartbreaks are. And we're talking about this from a profession standpoint. So from your work area, thinking about the lens of planetary health, 
please go back to sharing with that same beautiful person that you just met. Um, talk about what is not working. We're going to give this four minutes. So two minutes per person. You can go back and forth or you can do two minutes, two minutes. All right, four minutes. Not working. I got it. I can I I'm trying to tell that. And you know what, David? Well, I'm going to go to the first place. Right. All right. One more minute. One more minute. Okay. All right. So we got our gratitudes. We got what are the things that are working? And we we also talked about what's not working, right? Yeah, the things that we probably don't need to take into the future with us, right? Hopefully, right? Take the stuff that's working into the future. Let go of the stuff that is not working into the future, right? And now we are actually going to go into the future. Cue the person in the back. We are in a time machine. We're going to, yep. <laughs> okay, time machine, time machine. And now we are seven generations into the future, okay? And we did the math earlier today and it's 140 years from now okay so what year is that 125 years we did the math and then i forgot the number okay we're in the future we are seven generations into the future 
Okay. And now we're going to mix it up a little bit. So sit down and face us. Okay. Okay, students. So uh, this is what year is it? I love you. 2148. And your homework assignment, you are about to graduate from high school, but you have to do one more homework assignment. You are going to take your handy dandy, who's got a phone or an iPad? You're going to take your handy dandy personal transportation device back in time. And each of you are going to interview your ancestor from 2024. It turns out everyone's ancestors was at a Planetary Health Alliance meeting in 2024 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Every single one of you has to go back in time and you are going to interview each other's ancestors about the work that they did. But first, we want you to know that your ancestors do not know how incredible this future is that you are living. So what we want you to do is first look around, imagine this amazing future in 2048, 48, 2148. Imagine the future. All right. What does this future look like where humans, more than humans, water, the planet, everything is flourishing or on the way to regenerating and flourishing. Imagine what that looks like, what our social systems look like, what our transportation systems look like, what our communities and cultures look like. Really imagine that. Okay. Oh, now we're gonna punt. So Teddy and I are gonna role play. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hi. Great, 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 great grandmother. Wait, great, 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 great seven generations grandmother. I'm Heidi. I am your great, 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 great grandchild. And I'm coming in from, I have to do a homework assignment and I came to interview you. Yeah. I love you so much. I know, I'm awesome. <laughs> Let me tell you about the future because I came back to ask you for a homework assignment that I have to do before I graduate from high school. I came back to talk to you about the work that you were doing in 2024 that made such an amazing difference. Oh, I'm teary. So let me tell you about the future. All of our rivers run free around the world. Humans have enough food, and fresh water. Our communities are learning to live together. We have really big ears. We can listen to each other. Our ears are like out to here now. We've, we've transformed into listening. We love to dance. And we eat food out of our gardens. Our planetary boundaries are starting to get back into edging, in, into the edges. And anyway, for my homework assignment for high school so I could graduate, can I ask you what you were doing that made such an incredible difference for me or what you are about to do that's really making the big difference for me? Well, first of all, I was in love with you, even though I didn't know you. <laughs> I made a point of every decision I made was for the seventh generation. I decided that I was going to learn everything I could. And so I reached deep into my pockets and flew halfway around the world to come to Malaysia so I could learn from really cool people and get hope again. I decided that I was going to nurse the planet back to health. I knew how to nurse people, but this was much bigger. And I do love you. All right. I think I'm going to get an A plus on that assignment. So, yes. 
We did not rehearse that. We just came up with that. We should go on a road show. Anyway. All right. We did. We traveled through time. Now it's your turn. All right. Students, you have to go back in time and then come back and give us a report. So we're going to turn on the time machine. <laughs> All right. And then find someone new um, to interview about, to tell them about your future. So, okay, come on, people. You're in time zone. All right. Find a new friend or find an old friend. All right. And the first thing that you want to do is describe the future. All right. Do you want to just sit down and talk? Yeah, later? that would be good. I think it's just mm -hmm. I think we are. 
Thank you. That's the best. All right. I can't. The only whistle period. <laughs> Look at all these amazing conversations. All right, everyone. Um, wrap up all your insights. Okay, it's perfect. Okay, class. Mm, big hugs, right? What an opportunity to meet the ancestors of the future. Ah, the love that is in this room. So this is the report out piece. You all got to travel back in time to meet one of the ancestors of our future. And I would like to ask if folks feel comfortable, if we could get a couple shares. And I'm gonna look right at you, Erica, as the first person, nurses calling in nurses. Erica, can you share a little bit about what you experienced when you interviewed your um, ancestor of the future? Well, as any good nurse, we only got through half the assignment because uh, we we went through. So I was actually being interviewed and it was beautiful because the things that she was saying, we both teared up at the same time, of course, and um, she was really focused on on really just community and breaking down. Uh, there were no barriers and uh, a shared responsibility. And it was beautiful because um, I live in Minneapolis. And when I work with some people in the parks, I'm like, what if we said that we are a city within a park rather than parks in a city and how that would change people's boundaries and <clears throat> sharing, you know, community gardens belong to the earth. And and we are called to tend to her. And my number one thing I always say is you do not love what you do not know. And through connecting with nature, we learn to love ourselves and love nature and, and build that reciprocity to lengths that we'll never see until the seventh generation. That is some good ancestor work. Who else wants to share what, what you learned from one of your, from interviewing an ancestor? I see smiles and giggles there. Yes. Thanks, Nate and Gail. Yeah. So I, so the ancestor that I interviewed, I'm just going to be very brief. Uh, she shared about how uh, she worked hard to, to integrate research into, to, to bring in, uh, how would I say it? Would I call it? Like the colon yes, decolonizing research. And that's one of the key contributions that she made for me so that I would thrive better, me and my fellow uh children and generations. So thank you. Good ancestor work. Who else can share a little bit of their experience? Oh, all of a sudden we've been through time and we're shy. <laughs> Go ahead, just a few more ideas. Thank you. 
Um, actually, um, I have a grandchild that actually comes back to me to ask me what I did for her. And we went right from actually talking about how my generation, we try to get rid of plastic as a wrapper and how we, you know, go on to use um, plastic or your own bag, bring your own bag. And we talk about air quality, about the transportation that my century was facing and how we encourage solar energy. And my grandchild actually uh, was very positive, telling me all the good things that happened. Maybe she can actually share on that part rather than only from my side. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I had a very loving ancestor right here. And um, I think the way we look back was the way all of us here we're really rooted upon love and hope. So the way we saw the future was that it was hinged on the fact that we had a horrible thing to start with, but we did our best, even at our worst. So the way we saw our future then was that our micro contributions actually created a macro impact. It created a culture wherein people weren't afraid anymore to do small things to contribute because the small things that we did back then created so much to the point that our future generations got to live. We, in our hypothetical future, we had clean air. We didn't have any smoke anymore. Um, mutations for our kids weren't existing because we had a healthy future. And I think for everyone here, we were just so inspired like really look back and share that what we're doing right now is important no matter what field we are and whatever we contribute now will be an impactful thing for the future generations that we want to protect and we already love even though they're years and years ahead of us yeah is there one more ancestor story to share yes i think we did such a good job our ancestors turned green and they had longer ears as well so that was shrek for you so <laughs> no no not like that well in 2024 we all came to planetary health alliance and we followed this roadmap for what she mentioned, she's a very good Shrek. And we no longer have PM 2.5 and no longer do we have PM 2148, none of those. We breathe through all our ears and our nose. You see the skies that are blue, they're so blue that they turn purple and green sometimes. So it's a whole new planet that is different from what we see hear and feel today. And as an ancestor, I'm proud to see that, you know, the world has become a better place. Planetary Health Alliance is probably one of the first starting places before we actually implement something. So in that, we do it by faith. We do it by nursing. We do it by many different ways. And that's how we were able to achieve new planet within the same planet. But one of the downsides, which I really did not prefer, why are my ancestors green? Thank you. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you can you flip the slide so we feel really good about the process that we went through together the octopus uh, sisters um, we use the joanna macy the work that reconnects as part of the way that we went through the work um, we wanted to show you our website if you can pop up the website um and we have stickers, so if anybody needs a Nursing for Planetary Health sticker uh, for your water bottle, um, if you could just go, yeah, go into um, our invitation up there. So you can see this is n4ph.earth, and then we've got, um, yeah, we just put this up. We're really proud of it. Um, but we have the process that we went through together ourselves. We're still in the process of continuing to write and 
and work with nurses around the world to co-create this vision of nursing for planetary health. But the process that we went through as a profession, we wanted to share with each of you in your professions, please feel free to take what we've done and adapt it. Tell us your stories. Um, we, we felt really good about it. Um, and, and, uh, and you all got to experience just a little bit of it, plus the time travel. Is that um, the next step for us is we're completing a policy brief that will be published by the International Council of Nursing to guide nursing um, uh, practice all over the world. Um, I did want to acknowledge that we have some very, very special guests here today, and we're so honored to have um, nursing faculty and nursing some students from the Sunway School of Nursing. Um, so if you'll just give them a round of applause for being here with us today. We're also grateful to those of you that aren't nurses that decided to come by and join us. And um, yeah, so we have a little bit of time here. Are there any questions about anything we've said or um, any steps of the process that you have um, questions about? Thank you very much for the very good presentation. I'm born from Burundi. I don't know if uh, most of you know about this country. It's uh, in the eastern part of uh, Africa. Welcome. Uh, the concept of uh, uh, planetary health is, is uh, a new concept, especially in my country. Myself, I did not know about it uh, since last three months. And I'm here to learn and explore much more and I'm very happy with uh, all your knowledge that you are sharing here. I've learned a lot and I've already um, grabbed something, something that I would like to implement back home because I need to do something. And so my question was about is about uh, um, educating nurses. Um, since that is a new concept in a, a country where it is not understood, what strategies would you suggest me uh, to implement and how to go about it? Thank you. That's a wonderful question. And thank you so much for being here. And it's never too late to start. So you're on the journey with us and um, we're all learning together and we're grateful that you're you're here. Um, so we have three different stories about how we're starting to move this in. At the School of Nursing at the University of Minnesota, we have decided to have planetary health in every course at every level, our baccalaureate level, our master's level, and our PhD level. That's how we're doing it. We started by making it part of our school's mission to um, prepare future nurses who will care for people and the planet. So right away, our students are oriented towards that is who they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm gonna stand up. Um, I like standing. I'm really glad you asked the question. Um, and just to let you know, I'm from Canada. And in my particular university, we also have, um, it's actually mandated now in um, our curriculum framework across Canada for nursing. Planetary health was added two years ago, and I happened to be co-chairing the committee at that time. So what a wonderful opportunity for me to say, hey, I think something's missing. Global health was there, but planetary health wasn't there. So the reason I say that is that on a national level, that actually became the impetus for other schools of nursing to look at their programs. I've actually been integrating planetary health since 2018 in our undergraduate curriculum. And I now, because of that particular mandate that we have in that domain, I have it also in the undergrad, graduate, and which is the master's level and the PhD program. So we, we also have been on this journey like you. This is not something that's just happened automatically. It takes some, takes some time, but we would be happy to uh, connect with you on some of the experiences that 
Teddy has had, the experiences I have had. And so actually in our school of nursing, it also is integrated throughout the curriculum, but that is not all across Canada yet. So we're starting out and we're seeing the, the movement in understanding what is planetary health? How might we actually um, incorporate that in our curriculum? And I'm gonna, here, here's another third example. At the University of New Mexico, we're right at the very beginning of this story. Um, so we took the planetary health education framework and we thought about what are we teaching social justice and equity? We were doing a pretty good job of teaching that, but we weren't telling the stories about the environmental injustices. So we just started to add a few of those stories in. The Anthropocene and health, we weren't we were barely doing. We were doing it in some of our graduate programs, a little bit in our undergrad, but but not a lot. And that that is an ongoing process, teaching the faculty that this is important in nursing. And so how do we start to narrate the health impacts of climate change as something that our, our nursing students need to understand? We started with just extreme heat, right? Because we live in New Mexico. We're in a high desert. We're in a drought stricken area, we, we um, our extreme heat days have been increasing over time. So we just used the one local example to start to demonstrate what we all need to be teaching there. Um, we, the interconnection within nature, that was actually interesting. Um, we're, we're starting to talk through that because we have a very strong, um, we have 23 pueblos and tribes in our, in our state. And um, there are very strong theoretical frameworks for the interconnection within nature. And because our students are coming from these communities, working with people in these health systems, um, in, in um, you know, we, we started to just narrate that a little bit more. I think that's gonna be an ongoing process. So just, you know, it was, we started with like a couple of faculty, me and Mary Pat right there, um, who are um, dedicated to doing this work. And then um, through lots of love and enthusiasm and shenanigans, we started to gather our friends and we are collating groups of people that are fun to work with. And that's kind of how we're spreading the innovation. I'm going to ask Yelena to raise her hand in the back there. Yeah, you, Yelena. <laughs> she is the education director for the Planetary Health Alliance. So if you want um, to understand uh, how to get resources, the PHA has wonderful, wonderful resources, syllabi, courses, modules, videos, books, case studies, all there for you to use for free. So yeah, wave, seek out Yelena and she will help you get the materials you, you need. Another question. So many people will ask or be curious about what the barriers are to implementation. What I'd like you to, to hear is what are you finding joyful about the process of implementing this into your curriculum? That's a great question. Well, our, our students are wanting it. And so I will just tell you, I just I just adore my students, my graduate students, my undergrad. And at my particular university, we're the first in Canada to do the planetary health planetary report card um, at our university. And the the students have just taken over. So to see them, they're they're really our students are our metric right now. They want they want to know about this. They want to know. And so if we were someone like me who's dedicated a lot of my career to global health, and some of you may know of some of the work I've done and now, you know, in planetary health for the last 10 years, is um, it's really interesting to see this growing. And this has been happening for a while in terms of global health programs. I tell the story 2000, I think it was around a uh, good, uh, just about 24 years ago, there were three programs in global health. I can tell you there's a ton more now in global health and now, you know, planetary health. Some of us have been teaching the ecological determinants health and things like that, and I've written about that. But that's the joy, is to see these students. Um, I don't know. That's what I would have to say. And I would add that we talked about the brokenness and the sadness and the grief. We have in the United States, about we're short um, of nurses, about 250,000 nurses. 
short. We don't have them. And their um, people's hearts are breaking. What we're be finding is by talking about planetary health and this new future that we're building together, we're starting to draw people into nursing. We're starting to draw people into this field to co-create this future we know is possible. So it's a hope generating focus instead of a disease focus of what's wrong, what's wrong, what's scary, um, how are we going to become extinct? We've pivoted to, and what's it going to look like? Where's it, where are we going? And that's bringing tremendous amount of joy. Um, Kent, he's one of our students. So if you want to know later about what's possible, talk to this guy because he's doing amazing things in this whole area. And I just want to acknowledge that we're done with our time, but we do want to have one more question. Yeah, uh, thank you for, for that. Um, <laughs> um, actually, um, no, Malaysian, we are going to be uh, considered an age population by year 2050. Uh, where it is expected that around more than 15% of our population is uh, going to be elderly. So we will be considered as uh, elder, elder nation. Uh, so um, in preparation for that, um, what can you suggest uh, for us to, we, we do have the policy uh, in the planning now, but uh, I'm not sure uh, what uh, is your experience towards that because... Um, you know, as elderly person, I'm going into that soon. So <laughs> I'm interested to provide, uh, I think I might have a, a, a set up, uh, what, what do you call that, a uh, hub, what, what I mean, center or whatever for the elderly in the future. Uh, being a dietitian myself, I'm very particular about diet and all that. But uh, whatever it is in terms of planetary health, what could be done for that kind of, um, yeah, uh, future uh, poly, uh, planning for the elderly uh, person? Oh, that's easy. I'll just answer that in 15 seconds. No, um, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, we have so many challenges in healthcare. And I think one of the things that we really need to do is reimagine how we think about health and healthcare systems. Right? We're so used in nursing, we're so used to working in siloed hospital systems, waiting for people to be sick, and then they have to like find their way to us, and then we just tell them what to do. And, you know, they go back out and they can't quite get it done because they don't have access to what they need. We need to reimagine health completely outside of those systems. We also need to think about the transdisciplinary partnerships, like how do we work together? Nutrition, nursing, traditional healers, um, PE coaches, athletic trainers, all of those people. I know Teddy has a lot to talk about for this. That's because I'm getting closer to the elder role. <laughs> I give it a lot of thought these days. Um, take a look at the Sao Paulo Declaration on Planetary Health. Take a look at what it's calling the health sector to do. It's calling us to live differently and make different decisions, which will get a healthier population. So even though we can't stop aging, we're still going to move that. We haven't figured that out yet. We are going to age as healthier people. And so that is going to be what it will be improving is that we move and use the Sao Paulo Declaration to guide us for our vision of how is this going to look different. I think we need to end on that, but we will stay afterwards if you have questions. And please enjoy each other's company and enjoy each other's vision for what's possible. Thank you very much. <laughs>